Hey YouTube, welcome to the first episode of Crazy Kitchen Chemistry. I've got a really cool reaction to show you today, and it's something that you can follow along with in your kitchen as well. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be extracting caffeine from regular old coffee. Now we can do this with materials that I'm sure you already have laying around your house. All we need is some isopropyl alcohol. Now make sure you get uh, greater than 70%. You can use lower percentages, but when we recrystallize the caffeine in the final stage, it's going to be a lot easier to do it when there's less water in here. So in order to get a better product, 91 helps a lot. We also need sodium chloride or regular table salt. Now it's important we get the kind without iodine because we don't want iodine to also be crystallized out in our final product. So get the kind without iodine, we'll use that. The reason the table salt is very important is because isopropyl alcohol is very miscible with water. So it likes to mix with water really, really well. This is going to help us separate, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Now the last thing you need, because we're making coffee, is hot water, a pot, and a stove. So let's get started, and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so we've got our pot of water here heating up. Now, even before it starts to boil, I'm going to recommend putting in the coffee grounds because caffeine degrades thermally so the hotter caffeine gets the more of it will break down so we want to get the most extraction from the grounds into the water as we can at as low of a temperature as we can because that will be that will give us the best result for getting caffeine into the water before it's destroyed thermally. So let's give this a few minutes to cook and then we'll go on to the next step. All right now as you can see our gross coffee sludge here has uh, got to its boiling point so we're gonna go ahead and immediately shut it off to keep that ca uh, caffeine from degrading too much and now this is when we're gonna insert the salt because we want the salt to dissolve in water. Okay. Go ahead and mix this around until all the salt is dissolved. Now the reason that we're doing this is because water is a what's called a polar solvent and salt, regular sodium chloride, is an ionic compound. So what's going to happen is the salt is much more attracted to the polar solvent than it would be to a nonpolar solvent, which is the alcohol. So the salt is going to basically dissolve itself in the water and the caffeine is going to dissolve itself in the alcohol. And because water is very miscible with alcohol, if we didn't add the salt, it would both mix together. The salt sticking primarily to the water is what's going to help us float the lower density alcohol on top of the water. The reason that we need that flotation is because once the most of the caffeine is dissolved in the alcohol, the alcohol is floating on top of the water, we can pour it off, and we can then have a solution of only alcohol and caffeine. Now once the salt is properly dissolved here in the coffee sludge, we need to let this cool to room temperature before adding any of the alcohol. And the reason that we're doing that is because alcohol has a much, much lower evaporation temperature than water does. So if we were to pour the alcohol in immediately right now, it would all boil off and any of the caffeine that extracted into the alcohol would just go straight back into the water. So it wouldn't do anything for us except make some really flammable vapors. So I am going to go wait and let this cool for a while and I'll come back to you when it's ready to do the extraction. Okay, so now that your coffee sludge has cooled down, you can go ahead and pour it into a French press. Or if you don't have a French press, what you can do is you can pour it uh, into a funnel that is lined in coffee filters and let that drip down into another container. Now the reason that we're using this is just because we want to get all of the coffee grounds out of suspension. All of the stuff that won't dissolve, we want basically out of the liquid. Then we're going to take that, we're going to pour it into a glass bowl. Now the glass bowl is really important because we need to watch this reaction take place in order to 
get the alcohol off the top. Okay, here's our bowl of salty coffee water. We're going to take the isopropyl alcohol and we're going to just pour it in the top. Now we want to mix it around. And the extraction is beginning to take place right now. Now we need to let this settle so the alcohol and water begin to separate. Alright guys, so it takes a, just a little bit of tinkering to get perfect. Uh, I ended up having to add a little bit more salt and a little bit more alcohol to get it to separate immediately. But you'll see there, our upper layer is our uh, alcohol tincture and the bottom layer is our aqueous solution of other stuff. Now we can assume that the alcohol has a higher quantity of caffeine dissolved in it just based on the fact that caffeine is much more readily dissolvable in alcohol than water. So the next step that we're going to use is get yourself a turkey baster and we need to take off this top layer of alcohol and I'll show you what to do with it next. Okay guys now get yourself a cookie sheet lined in aluminum foil Take yourself a turkey baster and we're going to go ahead and draw off that top layer of alcohol and put it here on the uh, cookie sheet to evaporate. Make sure to keep your impurities down by not sucking up anything other than the layer of alcohol. Like, Don't get anything from that bottom water layer if you can avoid it. And if you do, just hold it like that for a second, and the water will sink to the bottom and drop out of the turkey base. When you get down to the very last bit here, you're going to have to separate it out in the turkey baster by hand. But you can see the separation right there. The bottom brown layer is water. So we can let that, let that out of the baster. And the rest of this is the alcohol, mix, uh, alcohol solution that we're looking for. So just let it sit for a minute. And if you get to the, a point where that separation does not form, just go ahead and let it out. Because that's, that's waste. We can't do anything with that. All right. Looks like we've gotten to a point where there's nothing more that we can extract off the top of this. So we can go ahead and get rid of it. Now what we have in the pan here, this stuff is mo the most important. This is what we want to keep. This is a solution of caffeine, rubbing alcohol, and various other impurities. So what we need to do, let that sit there and let the alcohol evaporate off for a few hours and we'll see what we're left with. Alright, so after recrystallization, this is pretty much what our product looks like on the pan here. Uh, this is the less pure side. This is some... Um, some of the kind of tar compounds came out of the coffee, some of the oil-based stuff that we don't want. But this over here, this little bit of powder that I scraped up, that is some very high purity caffeine. 
Well, it's mostly caffeine anyway. There's a lot of other stuff in it too. But with this extraction technique, that's about as high purity as you can get. All right, so here's a comparison. This stuff on the right side uh, is what we made, this kind of yellowish powder that has a lot of coffee impurities in it. This is laboratory grade uh, anhydrous caffeine. So our stuff is, eh, it's decently pure. Um, it's definitely enough to like put in drinks, baked goods, etc. Uh, for a nice boost. But this stuff is a lot cleaner. This is actually probably a lot more dangerous because there's a lot more caffeine here than there is here. Uh, that is probably about 500 milligrams. That's enough to make you pretty sick. And that's, I'm guessing that's probably a little close to 300 milligrams of caffeine in there. It's very difficult for me to measure because I don't have a scale that does uh, subgram weights. So we're just going to kind of have to guess. And if we look at uh, the plate that I used to recrystallize the caffeine, you'll see that there's still a lot left on the plate. All this white stuff is highly likely to be uh, caffeine. There's also probably some sodium chloride on there, but that's going to be a lot less likely. So enjoy guys, uh, don't uh, ingest too much. A full spoonful of this stuff is probably about a lethal dose. But our stuff is a lot safer because of its impurities. So go ahead and give this a try at home. Uh, tell me what you come up with and post your results in the comments. Hope you've enjoyed it guys. Have a good one and don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe.